Hi everyone, how's it going today? I hope you're all doing well and feeling good. It's always a pleasure to have you with me on my channel. Anyway, as usual, I will discuss some topics that you might like. I understand that the quality of this video might not be the best, but I hope that the content is still understandable and informative. If you're interested in learning more, I also have a Telegram channel where I share various information that I can't post here. And make sure to subscribe to my backup YouTube channel in case of unforeseen events. So without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. This video is going to be shorter than usual, but like, this is really important for me to talk about. Um, so the Biden administration has reportedly approved an Israeli assault on Rafah, which, you know, is the last, um, slightly safe city in the Gaza Strip. And, uh, they're openly preparing to work with Congress to, um, punish the International Criminal Court for seeking arrest warrants for Israeli officials for, you know, war crimes. So, who, um, deserves to be called the monster here? I talk about Biden's criminality a lot, but, like, I should probably clarify that, um, I don't do so because I believe Trump or even Kennedy would be, um, acting any kinder toward the people of Gaza if they were president. All three of the, um, arguably viable U.S. presidential candidates are, like, virulent Zionists who have all made it clear that they would back Israel's, um, genocidal atrocities with adamant fervor. A lot of fuss gets made over the West's brand of democracy. I mean, wars of aggression have been waged under the banner of, you know, spreading it throughout the world and allowing the people to control what their government will do. But what you very seldom see discussed in mainstream discourse is the fact that um, there are a great many issues that this form of so-called democracy never allows the people to vote on. The genocide in Gaza is arguably the single most urgent matter in the world right now, partly because of how horrific it is on its own and partly because of its potential to explode into wars that could bring way more devastation to the region. But like nobody's allowed to vote on whether this will continue or not, even in the heart of the US empire that's making it all possible. The only candidates who stand any chance of getting elected are all committed to making sure this mass atrocity continues. Because, you know, if you ever want to get anywhere near the presidency, you have to make a whole lot of deals with powerful forces who were never elected by anybody. And this just says so much about the nature of this democracy, a word which literally means rule by the people. If the people were actually in charge, there would be some option available to them to end the worst thing happening in the world right now. But the people are not in charge. When it comes to matters of the most importance, they never get a vote. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you've learned something. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell so you won't miss any updates. Finally, watch until the end to avoid any misunderstandings. Thank you. Americans don't get a vote on whether or not vast fortunes should be poured into funding a war machine that stretches around the world. That option is never on the ballot. They don't get to vote on whether or not the drastic action needed to prevent environmental collapse should be taken. They don't get to vote on whether the US empire should be escalating against nuclear armed nations like Russia and China with like ever increasing aggression. They don't get to vote on whether the wealthy should be getting richer and richer, while the poor have to struggle harder and harder to survive. And, you know, they don't get to vote on whether the wealthy should be allowed to use their wealth to influence political affairs in a way that just gives them more and more wealth and power. People don't get to vote on whether they should have their minds pummeled with empire propaganda 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year, by rich and powerful folks who are invested in manipulating the way they think, act, vote, shop, and work. They don't get to vote on whether their police force should be getting more and more militarized, or whether the surveillance practices of the U.S. intelligence cartel should be getting more and more intrusive. They don't get to vote on whether the U.S. should have the highest incarceration rate in the world and the profoundly unjust legal system that um, gives rise to it. And they don't get to vote on whether the internet should be getting more and more consolidated and censorship heavy as Silicon Valley megacorporations move into, like, more and more collaborative relationships with the U.S. government. They don't get to vote on whether there should be billionaires when there are people living on the streets. They don't get to vote on whether their government should be like encircling the world with hundreds of military bases and working to destroy any nation that disobeys it while their own people struggle and suffer at home. If you want to vote on something the powerful don't care about, there's a possibility your vote might have some sway. You might have some tiny degree of influence over women's reproductive rights, for example or whether gay people can get married. 
But when it comes to the mechanisms of the imperial machine, like war, militarism, propaganda, oligarchy, capitalism, or authoritarianism, your hand will get smacked away the instant you move to touch them. So, it's not really democracy then, is it? It's not really ruled by the people if all the most important and consequential decisions are made by forces with no accountability to the electorate, while the people are um, confined to a toddler's playpen in the corner arguing about pronouns and fat phobia. And what really sucks is that so many people believe this is freedom and democracy. The people will never know freedom until they first understand how profoundly unfree they really are. Now it's time for me to hear from you. What are your thoughts on this video? If you found it interesting or informative, please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing it with your friends and family. Remember, the more people know about these important topics, the better. Before we wrap up, I want to extend a huge thank you to all the individuals who dedicated their time and energy to research and gather the information presented in this video. Their efforts are truly commendable and have shed light on important topics that affect us all. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications to be notified when the next video is uploaded. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.